it rain my soul I died again get ready my soul I died again to the deepest kind of love to the sweetest kind of life get ready get ready my soul everything I've ever done everything I've ever seen everything I've lost the one everything I've ever dreamed has brought me here to the present moment here to a new beginning here and I've seen life so clearly Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living in Southeast Louisiana. I'm Reverend Larry Marie Heil, the spiritual director here, and we are a group of radically inclusive spiritual renegades, healing hearts and creating community, and embracing conscious spiritual living, encouraging everyone to live in enthusiastic expectancy of their abundance and their good. And today we're continuing our remarkable 2023 journey with our theme for October of togetherness in our service today, All Hallows Eve. Halloween is a time when the veil between the worlds grows thin and the spirits of the past and present mingle in the shadows. And there lies a spiritual message that's profound in that time. So I'm glad you chose to join us today and to hear the message. Let's begin with prayer. We take a collective breath and we just settle into that place within us where we know the goodness of all that we are, where we feel that connection with the divine presence, where we feel that unity with the higher power. And knowing that we are children of the divine, all that God is lives right within us, just waiting for our recognition of it. Mm. So what I know to be the truth today is that we are each here by divine appointment. There is a reason that we came to this service at this time, because something in the service, whether it be from the message or the music or a quote of all of the above, something in this service you are being called to hear today. And it's time for us to just listen up. Hmm. So I am so grateful. I'm grateful for this opportunity to be in service. I'm grateful to know that the God without is the God within every person on this planet, no matter how it appears to us that they're showing up. And knowing that, I just release my word into the law of mind, spirit, and action. Knowing the truth, the divine has already said yes. So I can say amen, and we can affirm it together. And so it is. And you know, for me to truly be in receptive mode for a spiritual message, I have to remember how very blessed I am at all times. So this opening song by Karen Drucker is just perfect. It's called, I Am Blessed. Enjoy it and sing along. Good morning, CSL Southeast Louisiana. Karen Drucker coming to you this morning. I've got a song I want you to sing with me, okay? This is the magic wand saying you could sing. Sometimes I need only to stand wherever I am to be blessed. Isn't that great to say every morning? Sometimes I need only to stand wherever I am to be blessed. That's the whole thing. So let me sing it again. 
Sometimes I need only to stand wherever I am to be blessed. Sometimes I need only to stand wherever I am to be blessed. Okay, now sing with me. Let me hear you. Here we go. Sometimes I need only to stand wherever I am to be blessed. Sometimes I need only to stand wherever I am to be blessed. This next part goes like this. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. So So this is our time for celebration and healing. Our time in our service where we celebrate life and we pray for people who desire prayer. We begin with celebration. So I invite you to say aloud so that the whole universe can hear it. Any event in your life for which you're grateful and joyful this week. And now we turn to the healing portion of our service. We're a community steeped in healing. So we pause now to pray for anyone who's not feeling the joy of life that we perhaps were just feeling. They're not feeling maybe that they have things to celebrate. And I truly love this part of our service because it's so in alignment with who we are. So let's pray. God is all there is. God is that love and that peace and ease and grace and freedom and so much more. And as an individual expression of the divine, each of us have within us all of these qualities of spirit. They're available to us right here and right now. And what I know to be the truth is that there are people on this planet right now that aren't embracing those qualities. So we stop for a moment. And we create a circle of love. And in this community, we place in that circle of love anyone that we recognize within ourselves or for someone else that might need prayer. So I'm gonna pause and I just invite you to say aloud the names of all of those people that you wanna include in our circle of love. I know that God is right where each of us happens to be, right here and right now, moving in through and as each of us. 
And I know that the divine has heard every name that we spoke, either in our hearts or aloud. And what I'd like you to do now is pause again. And from your heart to all of theirs, just send out love, knowing that the divine knows exactly how to distribute it. And what I know to be the truth is that anything that needs to be released within each of these people is being released now, be it disease of the mind, of the body, of the soul. I know that anything that's seeking to come forth and be lifted up can be lifted up. And that this release and this lifting up is healing whatever's called to be healed. I know that each of these people is feeling more deeply their connection with the divine right now. I have evidence of that, and I know it to be the truth for everyone that we place in our circle. So I'm so grateful to know that the God without is the God within me. The God without is the God within every person in our circle, every person in this community, and every person on this planet. And I'm grateful for that power of community prayer and what it means to the uplifting of the people on this planet. So it's from all that gratitude that I release this prayer into the law of mind, spirit, and action. Because I know that the divine, in all of its wisdom, has already called all of this good. Any heavy lifting that needs to be done to heal whatever needs to be healed, the divine is already taken care of. So I can just know it's already done, say amen, and together we can affirm it. And so it is. I invite you to join me for our community affirmation. My life's purpose is already within me, and I am committed to its unfoldment. I am here by divine appointment to join in a community that cares for one another, to be in a place that transforms people's lives, to remember the highest truth about myself, to learn spiritual tools for personal transformation, and thus to make the world a more joyful place. So this is our time for meditation. And I truly invite you, if there are things in the outside world that are disturbing you, to just let go of that involvement for a few minutes. The past is gone, the future we don't know so give yourself some time to be in this holy instant and just settle into being with the divine. Allow yourself to just open your heart to listen, knowing that when we receive, we are filled with the divine. Enjoy Karen Drucker as she sings, I Listen. So here's our meditation song this morning off my brand new album, actually, written with wonderful singer-songwriter Jan Garrett. So I invite you to just take a deep breath and sing with me these words. No push, no pull. I am empty and full. I breathe and receive and listen. No push, no pull I am empty and full I breathe and receive and listen so that's the whole thing right there again no push no pull I am empty and full I breathe I breathe and receive and listen and listen 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 do it again no push no pull I am empty and full I breathe and receive and listen, listen.
listen, listen, say it again. No push, no pull, empty. I am empty and full. I breathe and receive and listen, listen, listen. Listen to your heart now. Teach you another verse here. No, I trust. Let go. I surrender and know my heart is open to listen. Let's do that one again. I trust, let go. I trust, let go, surrender and know. I surrender and know. My heart is open. My heart is open to listen, to listen. All right, let's go back to the beginning part. No push, no pull. No push, no pull. I am empty and full. I breathe and receive and listen. Just that line. Listen. I listen. I listen. I listen. I'm Nancy Wirtz, and today's reading is from 365 Science of Mind, a daily wisdom from Ernest Holmes. Today's reading is October 30th. I enter the port of attainment. I enter into my divine inheritance and know that all my inward vision perceives will be mine. Like Moses, I stand on the mountaintop of spiritual perception, 
Now free from all obstruction, the vista is perfect. The vision is sublime. There are no clouds in the sky. I look out across innumerable other mountain peaks and in each I recognize another divine subject of the heavenly presence. The gates of my soul are lifted up and a flood tide of intuition flows through. Confronted with discord, I see harmony. Confronted with unhappiness, I will unmask it also. Seeing through this false face to the true countenance of joy. It is written that joy comes with the morning. I know this morning is eternal. Confronted with a sense of lack, I will unmask this false sense and reveal the divine horn of plenty. I will lift up my bowl of acceptance that it may be filled with the divine gifts. I embark upon the sea of today's experience, knowing that the heavenly pilot is at the helm. I seek the bold adventure of discovering new lands, realizing there is a place within me where thought springs spontaneous from the infinite and where the idea and the thing merge into one. I permit the inspiration of divine creativity genius of the universe to impart new ideas, to create new scenes, to enlarge all my horizons. I feel that the ocean beneath me is teeming with life, that the air is vibrant with invisible forces. My boat rides safe and sure, and even now I'm entering the port of attainment. And so it is. This song is a perfect introduction to this message. Because if we need to remember anything right now, it's to trust that we have whatever lessons we need showing up for us in our life in every moment. So sing along with Karen as she sings, To Be Here. Uh, yes, what we have to go through in our lives to get to a point of saying, I'm here, I'm worthy. I wrote this song with Gary Lynn Floyd, brand new song for you. I trust that I got this I know that I know I've got all that I need So it's time to let it go I'm through with complaining and Living life small Give me every emotion I want to feel them all I've spent too much time censoring who I am. I am open, I am willing, I am feeling free and clear. Finally, I'm seeing I am worthy to be here. I am here. I am here to be here and I am present I let it all be I have uncovered the truth about me the veil has been lifted that always kept me apart no longer hiding I'm ready to start Step into my power and trust my heart. I am open, I am willing, I am feeling free and clear. Finally, I'm seeing I am worthy to be here. I am here. I am here. To be here No place I would rather be It's time I let the whole world see This brilliant light that shines through me Is who I am Who I really am And I am ready I am moving 
I let go of all my fear Finally I know I am enough I am, I am open, I am willing I am feeling free and clear Finally I'm seeing I am worthy To be here To be here I am here To, to be, be here, to be here, right now, I am here, I'm ready, to be here, I'm here, I am here, to be here, to be here, I am open, I, I am willing, I am feeling, to be clear. clear, I am open, I am here. ready, Veil has been to lifted. Be here. I'm here. I am here to shine my light. To be here. No longer hiding. I am here to be here. So I want to thank our reader, Nancy Words, who always does such a marvelous job. And Karen Druck and our music team for the fabulous music that supports the message today. Today, we're ending our month on togetherness, and I want to talk about All Hallows' Eve. When the veil between the worlds grows thin, and the spirits of the past and the present mingle in the shadows, there lies a profound spiritual message. Halloween night is bathed in the soft glow of moonlight and flickering candle flames, and it carries with it a whisper from the universe to our souls, a reminder of how very close we are to the reality of who we really are, spirit. And we're reminded of the interconnectedness of all things. So I promise to tell you more about that spiritual journey, but first I have a question for you. What is the one choice you can make today to remember Life is impermanent. To see the interconnectedness of all things and to know love transcends the limitations of time and space. One more time. What is the one choice you can make today to remember life is impermanent, to see the interconnectedness of all things and to know Love transcends the limitations of time and space. Because we're talking about All Hallows' Eve, I want to talk a little bit about how thin the veils are between our world and the world beyond. Those where our ancestors and our loved ones who passed before us reside. And I want to talk about the beauty of impermanence. In the hush of the autumn wind, we're called to embrace that life on this planet is not permanent. As leaves fall and nature prepares for slumber, we notice the impermanence of life, and it's a profound teaching, echoing the very essence of existence. It speaks to the eternal cycle of birth, growth, decay, and transformation that every living being experiences. Life's impermanence is a reminder that change is the only constant in the universe, a fundamental law woven into the fabric of reality. And yes, I know how many people resist change in spite of it being a constant. The resistance is futile and we might take to heart the wise words of Lao Tzu. Life is a series of natural and spontaneous changes. Don't resist them, that only creates sorrow. Let reality be reality. Let things flow naturally forward in whatever way they like. In spiritual terms, the importance of life serves as a catalyst for awakening. It urges us to recognize the transient nature of all phenomenal 
and it encourages us to detach from the material world and to seek deeper truths. When we understand that our bodies, our emotions, our thoughts, and even the world around us are in a perpetual state of flux, we're liberated from the illusion of permanence. This realization invites us to explore the unchanging core within ourselves, that eternal essence that transcends the ethereal nature of our physical existence. Spiritually, impermanence teaches us the art of letting go. When we release our attachments to fleeting experiences and material possessions, we make room for spiritual growth and inner peace. It encourages us to live in the present moment, appreciating the beauty of each breath and the preciousness of each encounter. Embracing impermanence allows us to cultivate gratitude, gratitude for our experiences and for the relationships we have, knowing they are gifts to be cherished in the here and now. Eckhart Tolle once said, realize deeply that the present moment is all you ever have. Make the now the primary focus of your life. So just as the trees surrender their leaves, we must learn to release the burdens that weigh us down, those grudges, those fears, those regrets. In this letting go, we create space for new beginnings and for growth and for the blossoming of our truest selves. In understanding life's impermanence, we're encouraged to foster compassion and empathy. When we recognize that everyone we meet is subject to the same cycles of change, we can approach others with kindness and understanding. Who knows what they're going through? And we can become more forgiving, more accepting, more loving, realizing that beneath the temporary differences lies a shared essence of existence. And in the oneness, there is a sense of liberation. We become free from the fear of loss, the anxiety of change, and the sorrow of separation. Instead, we embrace the flow of life with grace and equanimity. By accepting impermanence, we open ourselves to the infinite possibilities of spiritual evolution. And we move up that spiral staircase I was talking about, understanding that the soul's journey is eternal. And our experience in the physical realm are just a brief but meaningful chapter in the grand story of existence. So let's talk a little bit more about that interconnectedness of life, that unity, which is the recognition that every living being, every element, every experience in this universe is intricately connected, forming an intricate web of the energy and consciousness. And this interconnectedness is a spiritual concept it transcends the boundaries of space and time, emphasizing the unity and the oneness of all creation. From a spiritual standpoint, interconnectedness of life means there is a divine thread that runs through all living things, binding them together in a sacred tapestry of existence. We are not isolated individuals. We are expressions of the same universal energy manifesting in universal forms and in diverse forms. Further, interconnectedness implies that the actions of one being have repercussions on the whole. They create a ripple effect that echoes throughout the entire cosmos. Ram Das once said, we're all just walking each other home. When we make a conscious decision to recognize interconnectedness, that decision fosters a deep sense of empathy and compassion. We understand that all beings share a common essence and we naturally feel a kinship with the world around us. 
this awareness inspires feelings of love, of kindness, and of reverence for all life forms. Harming another is akin to harming ourselves. So this interconnectedness promotes a sense of responsibility towards the environment, as well as towards our fellow humans and all sentient beings. And it encourages us to live in harmony with nature and with each other. And while we might not see that happening in the world, we know that underlying all of this, we are indeed one. When we truly understand interconnectedness, we have a sense of unity with the divine. You know, many spiritual traditions teach that there is a universal consciousness, a divine presence, an ultimate reality that connects all living things. And by recognizing that, we acknowledge our relationship with the higher power, realizing as our philosophy teaches that the same divine essence resides within us and within all of creation. This awareness can deepen our spiritual journey and help with our spiritual practices because it creates a sense of reverence, of gratitude, and awe for the mystery of existence. When we realize that every experience, every encounter, and even every challenge is an opportunity for growth and learning, we grasp that our lives are intertwined with the lives of others. And we understand that our personal evolution is linked to the collective evolution of humanity. We become more mindful of our thoughts, of our words, of our actions, knowing that they contribute to the overall vibration of the interconnectedness of life. Ernest Holmes told us, life is a mirror, reflecting unto us all things which we love and hate, admire and despise, fear and cherish. What we find in the mirror is our own reflection, never that of another. The things which we see in our world are but the outward reflections of the inner state of our thinking. Wow, those are powerful words. What we see in our world is an outward reflection of our state of thinking. I know I want that mirror of mine to reflect love and joy and compassion and kindness at the very least. What about you? What do you desire your mirror to reflect? Because it's in this reflection that we're invited to expand our awareness beyond the boundaries of our individual self and recognize the divine unity that permeates all creation. In a sense, it's a call to honor and respect all of life and to foster a deep sense of harmony and of love and reverence for the intricate tapestry of existence. Albert Schweitzer advises, impart as much as you can of your spiritual being to those who are on the road with you and accept as something precious what comes back to you from them. Amidst the eerie silence of All Hallows' Eve, the boundaries between the living and the departed blur reminding us that love transcends the limitations of time and space. The spirits of our ancestors, the whispers of wisdom carried through generations, linger in the air, reminding us that we are never truly alone. Their love and guidance surround us, and they encourage us to listen to the echoes of the past and learn from the experiences of those who came before us. All Hallows' Eve also beckons us to embrace the mystery of existence. In the flickering shadows and the ghostly apparitions, we find the beauty of the unknown. Life is a journey, and sometimes the path ahead can be shrouded in darkness. Yet it's in the darkness that we can discover our own inner light. 
that light that can guide us through even the most uncertain of times. We can trust in the journey for every twist and turn, every encounter with the mysterious shapes our souls and leads us closer to the divine truth that unites us all. Thich Nhat Hanh said, enlightenment is understanding that there is nowhere to go, nothing to do, and nobody you have to be except exactly who you're being right now. Let me say that last line again. Nobody you have to be except exactly who you're being right now. Who better to be than exactly who you are? We wear masks for Halloween, and sometimes we wear them at other times in our lives. So sometimes we try to mask who we are. We might do it to fit in, to be liked. Why not instead do what Karen was singing about right before the message in her song, To Be Here? It's great advice. Uncover the truth of who you are. Let the barrier be lifted that always kept you apart. Quit your hiding and be ready to start to step into your power and trust your heart. You know, there was a group of monks in a monastery in Thailand, and in 1957, they were relocating. And so one day they were going to move this giant plate Buddha, and they realized that it weighed a lot. We now know it weighed 121 tons. It wasn't a task for a few months. So in examining the situation, one of the monks noticed a large crack in the clay. And on closer investigation, he saw there was a golden light emanating from that crack. So he used a hammer and a chisel and he chipped away all the clay exterior until what was revealed was a statue that in fact was made of solid gold. Now there's a background to this story. In the 18th century, the Burmese were notorious for melting the gold of other nations they conquered. And in 1767, during the Burmese-Siamese War, the Siamese covered the Golden Buddha with terracotta and colored glass to hide its true value. No one would want to steal a Buddha that was made of clay, but the world wouldn't know until 1957, the true identity, because all of the monks had been killed in the attack. The people of Sukuta had been successful in protecting their golden Buddha from the outside invaders. And when the Burmese conquered the Ayutthaya kingdom, they destroyed most of the prominent temples and melted much of the gold from that kingdom the golden Buddha remained intact and continues to stand strong today. The monks had saved it by masking it with clay and colored glass. It was a full body mask, so to speak. And I think sometimes we mask our goldenness. We get disconnected from who we are. We cover ourselves with so many forms of clay and colored glass, so to speak, that much of who we are gets lost in the shuffle of that. Over the course of our life, our golden self gets covered in so many layers that the heaviest layer of clay is of our own doing. Can you imagine a world in which every person returned to their natural state, to their golden Buddha self? Just imagine chipping away at the full body mass that we've layered ourselves in. May Sarton wrote, we have to dare to be ourselves, however frightening or strange that self may prove to be. So as we stand on this threshold of All Hallows' Eve, let your heart be open to the lessons it offers. Embrace the wisdom of impermanence Honor the interconnectedness of all beings and find solace in the mystery of life. In the quiet moments of that enchanted night, 
May you feel the presence of the divine guiding you, protecting you, and reminding you that you are a beloved child of the universe, forever connected to that eternal dance of existence. So in summary, how might you fully embrace the spiritual message of All Hallows' Eve? Remember the impermanence of life. Change is a constant in life. Accept it. Detach from this world and seek deeper truths. Make the now the primary focus of your life. And see the interconnectedness of all things. Embrace the intricate web of energy and consciousness. And remember, we're all just walking each other home. Make your mirror one of love, joy, and kindness. And know that love transcends time and space. There's nobody you need to be except exactly who you are. Give up your mask and unveil your Goblin Buddha self. So here's your affirmation for the week. How is it I so willingly, gently, and effortlessly remember life is impermanent, see the interconnectedness of all things, and know love transcends the limitations of time and space. And I invite you to uncover the whole truth of who you are this week. That's a challenge. Strip away the, your layers of clay Reveal your golden self and check in every day or two to see, are you still wearing those masks? So let's pray. <sighs> just take a deep nourishing breath and just imagine the collective breath that everyone just took in this service. That interconnectedness of life, that divine life that lives right within us as us, who we are. Hmm. What I know to be the truth is that each of us is making the now the primary focus of our life right now. We're remembering we don't walk alone. We're walking each other home. And what I know to be the truth is that as we dig deeper into who we are, all of that false clay that we put on top of our true selves begins to get chipped away and our golden light shines bright. I am so grateful to be a part of this community, a part of a community that supports each other truly in all ways. Hmm. So it's from that gratitude that I release my word, knowing that as I release it into that divine yes, it's already done because we have asked. It has been given. So I say amen and we can affirm it together. And so it is. And I would want to remind you to save January 20th. It's a special day. We're going to be having our big event called New Beginnings, New Home. And we'll give you more data about that as it gets closer. In the meantime, thanks to everyone that's been donating and keeping our center alive through these many times of online services. I truly appreciate it. Enjoy our offertory song. Good work in the world. 
find all of the information for donating at our website at cslsoutheastla.org. You can use the donate button there or you can use Zella or Venmo at 225-287-8887. You can text your amount to 1-225-320-5100 or you can mail your donation to CSL Southeast Louisiana, care of Reverend Larry Marie Heil, 445 Magnolia Wood Avenue, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70808. We thank you for your tithes and donations, and we appreciate the fact that you are giving gifts that are flowing out to everyone we touch. And the way to truly see the miracles of life and have them show up for us is to be open to noticing them. So this week, with Halloween so close and the veil so thin, I invite you to be brave and do just that. Show up to all that you can be. Sing along with Karen as she closes out our message with this beautiful song called Brave. Here's what I've learned. To be authentically yourself is an act of bravery. I wrote this song with Claudia Carowin called Brave. If I just show up and be open to surprise. There could be miracles right before my eyes. And if I just let go, something better might appear. Who knows what will happen when joy replaces fear. When I dare to be all that I meant to be Like a shooting star across the sky Unstoppable and free I shine my light I turn darkness into light When I dare to be brave I'll trust in who I am Be bold and take a shot Who knows what will happen When I give it all I got And even when I'm scared I'm gonna step into the rain And I've got so much to offer With the gifts that I can bring when I dare to be all that I'm meant to be Like a shooting star across the sky Unstoppable and free I'm gonna shine my light I'll turn darkness into light When I dare to be to my 
my heart and not what other people say. My favorite line of the whole song. <laughs> I'm going to take that leap because I've never felt so strong. I might not do it perfectly, but I'm right where I Turn darkness into light When I dare to be brave I'm gonna dare to be brave Nothing's gonna stop me now When I dare to be brave Be brave Can you be brave? my authentic self. Let nothing stop me. Let that veil be lifted. Let's all just be brave and be who we are. And so it is. Next week, we begin a new month with our November theme, The Glory of Creation. And what better way to start the series than with a message on creation's gentleness? You know, in the gentle caress of creation, there's a reminder that amidst the chaos, there's a tranquil rhythm guiding us back to our essence. So join us next week as we look at how we can see the gentleness in all of creation. I hope to see you there. Thank you for joining us today. I invite you to like us on Facebook at Center for Spiritual Living, Southeast Louisiana. And please follow us on our YouTube channel at CSLSELA. And it's just about time to join in our community time, which is a live discussion that follows the service every Sunday at 11.45 a.m. You have a little bit of time to go get a cup of coffee or some tea and then dial into our conference line. The number is 540-792-0192. And the participation code is 475-220. We hope you'll join us. And so in closing, Disney claims to be the happiest place on earth, but we at the Center for Spiritual Living know that we are the most joyful. And so until we meet again, may you be wrapped in the arms of love and kindness, and may you continue to release the material world and seek higher truths. May you walk with your fellow journeys and bring them home. And may you make the now the primary focus in your life. For what I know is when we allow love to transcend time and space, when we strip away all of our masks and show up exactly as our golden selves to everyone we encounter, we feel very much alive. Alive, 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 alive.